Hello friends, Keith Hershey here. I just want to say a big thank you from our very deepest point of our heart to all the Kingdom Builders. You all are making a massive difference, not only throughout your region of the world, but all over the world. And Heidi and I and the teams of Mutual Faith Ministries just want to say thank you. In fact, this calendar year, you all are completing with all the financial assistance for the retreat at Victory Lane. This retreat is named after the church ministry, Victory, letting people know there's victory in Jesus, of course, but this beautiful campus is gonna house all kinds of leadership training for village pastors in this very strong Muslim region of the Philippines. We're so excited about this. This will be completed and dedicated in this calendar year and all the resources and really a lot of the vision for it came from Victory. So thank you so much Kingdom Builders for making this happen. This will also subsidize and help all the 28 orphans there at the Life Home. These are many of them are neglected kids, not totally strictly orphans, but they've been blessed and refreshed in the new Life Home that you built, Kingdom Builders built it for the girls there and it was dedicated to the Lord and also the big pavilion there where we host all kinds of concerts and events and outreaches for the community. Kingdom Builders made that happen as well. So thank you so much. And indeed, other parts of the world in Africa, you all are making a difference with us. And in the Middle East, in Beirut, Lebanon, at the Middle East Life Center. So thanks so much for being planted in the local church. Thank you for being a Kingdom Builder. And uh, don't forget, God loves you completely. And we love you too. What a privilege, what a privilege it is to be a kingdom builder. Uh, Keith and Heidi Hershey's ministry has touched the world. Kingdom builders, the things you've done in the Philippines, that's just, just one small sliver of one ministry that you're doing work. Um, you saw those panels, the solar panels, that's in Beirut, Lebanon. Uh, their center there has been serving and reaching Muslims coming out of Syria, the refugees. Uh, there's v virtually no electricity in Beirut, two, three hours a day. And, and you help get the solar panels so they can have electricity, do the work they do. It's remarkable what you get to do as a kingdom builder. Just so, so grateful. We want to take a moment and we want to welcome our campuses. Newcastle, we love you. Come on, man. Meville, those of you online. Caring Barry, would you give them a welcome? <clears throat> I have a, a, an update for you. One of the ministries we support is a ministry that focuses in Vietnam and, and Cambodia, Laos and Myanmar and some of the most persecuted places on the planet. Uh, if you've been coming to Victory or if, you're on my, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, uh, I've, I've been posting uh, about a certain pastor, and I'll, I'll leave the nation out, uh, and his, there's the picture of him. You'll see come up on the screen. And uh, he was arrested for preaching the gospel. He's one of the key pastors that had pastors under him in the home churches, and they put him in jail and initially. Then they moved him to the provincial prison, which basically means you may never leave that place. And, uh, and so I just got a notification from the ministry we're supporting there. Uh, in fact, it's Michelle's brother who's in Thailand. He has lived there for, for so long and serving there that he was just released from prison. Praise God, and he's home. <clears throat> And I want you to know as a kingdom builder, that's what we say over and over again, don't do the math, do your part, because you, it's so impossible to fill you in on everything. I want you to know that you helped provide for his family while he was in prison, and I also want you to know that the first 14 days he was there, they tortured him. And it's unimaginable what people of serving God around the, around the world, the persecuted church endures. But I also want you to know that he went back home, and he's immediately going back to doing exactly what he did. These are people that are hazarding their lives for the kingdom of God. And I, I don't even have words to tell you the privilege to be able to support that, that pastor and his family. And that's what you're doing as a kingdom builder. And so thank you so, so very much. And uh, also, John Maxwell is coming, man, next, next weekend. Man, you don't want to miss him at all of our campuses. John is remarkable, and uh, you just don't want to miss that. Make sure you bring folks with you from every sphere of life, because John is a world-renowned expert on leadership, and he's a one, he is a man of God through and through as well. So you don't want to miss John Maxwell next weekend. Now, remember, I've asked John to do a different message on Saturday and Sunday. So if you were to hear John do two messages and you were to go to one of the conferences, you, you pay a lot of money because John does a secular work as well. If you were going to bring him into your Fortune 500 company, it's a whole lot of money. But he come into Victory because you're a part of what they do in their nonprofit, touching the world. And so thank you, Victory, for all that you do. And man, make sure you take full advantage 
of, of John Maxwell coming. This is Pastors Appreciation, uh, Appreciation Month. There's so much more and so many more pastors here than just Michelle and I. And I just want to encourage you to just make sure you thank all of them. And, of course, in Newcastle, John and Kara, you make sure you hug them and thank them for what they do. Meadville, Sean and Sarah, they're remarkable. Here at the Cranberry Campus, which supports here at our campus and some other things beyond our campus. Of course, there's Pastor Steve, the old guy. Now, we're the same age for about nine more days, and so he is a young man. In nine more days, he will be old as dirt again. So, uh, but uh, Pastor Matt, of course, is our executive pastor. Rebecca, she pastors our children's ministry. Ben, the youth. Pastor Chris, our outreach and missions. Pastor Bob is our family pastor. Uh, pastor Paul, over, he's our administrator over the church. And John Spencer, who is officially retired, except he works like he isn't. Aren't you, aren't you thankful? Come on, man, for our pastors, man, so good. And, of course, all of our lay pastors at all of our campus, we love you guys so much. One more time, would you thank God for all of your pastors? We are so grateful, so, so grateful. I want to talk to you today about three responses to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, three responses that are available to every human being on planet Earth, whether you're far from God or whether you know God intimately. And I want to take you into an understanding today, not a theological understanding, but an experiential understanding. Jesus didn't come for you and for me to have a weekend church thing. He came so you could experience life in him every day of the world. Here's the amazing thing is you get to choose your response. I get to choose my response to God, the Holy Spirit. God is amazing that he gives us that. I have to tell you, if I sent my son to die for the sin of the world... That free will thing would have went away. I'd have said, y'all are serving me if you want to or not. I'm going to make that happen. But God wants to receive love from you. And the scripture said, because he loved you first, you can love him back. And is it amazing that the maker of the universe not only wants to, to redeem you, but he wants to be your father and have an intimacy with you, with the power and the person of the Holy Spirit, where we get to choose our response. There are so many benefits to having the, uh, the Holy Spirit's action in your life. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One God, three distinct personalities. Now you might say, well, I can't quite understand that. And you probably never will be able to wrap your mind around God because you're not him. But you know, God made man in his image and, 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 and there is a little window that he's given you in how there's one God, three distinct personalities in that you are made in his likeness and image. Man is a triune being. He's three parts. He's a spirit being who possesses a soul. That's his mind, will, and emotions. And he lives in a body. And, and you and try to separate those right now. Your spirit and soul from your body. Only death separates the spirit and soul from the body. In fact, the Bible says only the word of God can separate the spirit and soul. It, 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 it shows you the, the magnificence of God. But Jesus, when he ascended... The Holy Spirit is the part of the Godhead today that is manifesting himself on planet Earth. I want you to see some of the benefits. Now, I'm not going to list these because I want you just to listen to them. But if you want this list with the scripture references aside, uh, they'll be on my Facebook and my Instagram. I've asked them to post this list because I know people are going to want this. These are some of the benefits. Every day, everyone say every day. This is an everyday walk with God, man. Not a, not, a, not a Sunday or a Saturday night, Jesus. It's every day of the world, intimacy with God. These are the benefits of having the presence of the Holy Spirit in your everyday life. The scripture tells you that you can be led directly by the Holy Spirit himself. That you can have the wisdom and knowledge of God imparted to you by the Holy Spirit. That you can be taught the truth by the Holy Spirit. Not a truth, which is nonsense, but the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. And he said, the Holy Spirit literally will teach you truth. In fact, you can love others by the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture said, the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. You can't even love people without an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, not God's love. Peace and comfort come from the Holy Spirit. Understand that peace and comfort are not an experience you feel because of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my comfort I leave you. And, here's what he, and then he said, and now I give you my spirit. The Holy Spirit is the peace of God. You don't obtain the peace of God. You have the peace of God because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit when you give your life to, to Christ. The peacemaker 
is in you. Imagine in a, in a troubled world. It, it, the, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will show you glimpses and pieces of the future. Aren't you glad that God's seen tomorrow and that he can show you glimpses as, 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 he, as he sees fit? You can be protected from, by, from Satan and his kingdom and even from going astray from God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your body can be healed by the Holy Spirit. You can pray in the Holy Spirit, a divine language. The Bible says that you can pray divine secrets that your mind cannot comprehend. It's an amazing relationship. Experience freedom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Changed into the image of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's not talking about your, just your inward life. Your actual outer life can be changed. The way you live your life every day, every day of the world, can be literally changed in the image of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. He said fear will be replaced with power, love, and a sound mind by the Holy Spirit. How many of you realize in the world we live, you need some power of God, love of God, and a sound mind? Come on. Okay, this is a world that is crawling nuts. And, it, and literally, he said this, the last part is you can witness Christ to other people by the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't say you would just go witness. Your life would become a living witness. It's incredible. These are just some of the benefits that exist. And again, as I said, oh, yes, if you can go on my Facebook or Instagram, I'd, I'd like to tell you how to do that, but you, you find a teenager. If you don't know how, I, don't, I can't quite explain it. So you just find it, and it'll be there for you, and, and post it, read it, let God go to those scriptures, let him speak to your heart. Now, I want to take you to the command. Everyone say command. Jesus made a command about the Holy Spirit, a command, not a suggestion, not a maybe so. The Son of God, just prior to his ascension, after the resurrection, made a command to every believer about the Holy Spirit. And here it is in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. We'll read verse 4 and 5, then verse 8. This is just prior to his ascension. And Jesus being assembled together with him, Jesus commanded, everyone say commanded, all of the campuses, say it again, say commanded. One more time, commanded. I want you to get this. This is God, the Son of God, commanding something to his people. And Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, what is that? Jesus said, which you have heard of me or from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized or fully immersed with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. In verse 8, he said, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And then you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And then he speaks to our, 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 our world, to the very ends of the earth and to the end of time as we know it. Every believer is commanded to receive the promise of the Father, which is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. But there are three responses that you can have. Every one of us will have one of these three responses. And at some point in your life, you may have had all three. But here's what I want you to get what I'm about to read to you. Everything I'm about to read you, everything you're about to hear, it is absolutely no different today than the day this happened. The day that this happened, there is no difference to what was offered to them on the day I'm about to read to you when the Holy Spirit came to the church, when, when Jesus said they would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The same thing that was offered to them, listen now, is, is exactly offered to you. There's not 10 cents of difference. The only thing that is different will be the response and there are only three you can have. So I'm going to read you the dissertation of every, the story of what happened. And then we'll go into the three responses. Remember, you get to choose. Say it out loud. I choose. God doesn't force you to do anything. He's given you free will. You get to choose your response to God himself. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1, this is now, Jesus said not many days this would happen. Now here, here it is. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. There were 120 of them. Suddenly a sound like, a blowing, like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the languages or the utterance. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound of their languages, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. 
utterly amazed. Everyone say utterly amazed. Look, if the God you serve doesn't leave you utterly amazed, it's religion. You cannot connect to the God of the universe who loves you and not be utterly amazed over and over again by the power of God in your life. That's what exists for every Christian. Man, we aren't in the cave waiting to get out. We're in the earth. Jesus said, occupy it until I come. And we don't occupy it like a, like a warfare occupying force. We're an occupying force of freedom to people. Aren't you glad to be able to bring people to a savior? Aren't you grateful for that privilege in this earth? That's what you're called to do. It is such an honor to do that. It really is. Utterly amazed, they asked. Are not all these men, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and other parts, the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. There were about 15 languages in all that they were hearing. We hear them declaring, now listen, the wonders of God in our own language, amazed and perplexed. They ask one another, what does this mean? Others, mocking, said these are drunk with new wine. Our vernacular, they're hammered. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the cloud. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. And listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, what you are witnessing is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. This was a prophecy from the Old Testament. That in the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Everybody say all people. Not just Jews, all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Prophesy in this context means to speak by divine inspiration. Now listen, sons and daughters was... To, to use those two terms together, men and women, that God would use was so controversial in that day and is still controversial in the Middle East. Women were considered a, so far beneath a man. One of the prayers that a Jewish man would pray is this, God, I thank you that I was not born a woman. A woman is made in the image of God as is a man and together they make up the full image of God. And this I can't exaggerate to you how controversial this statement would have been to that culture. God just said, I'm not just going to use men. I made both of you all. It's just you're crazy that made them less than you. And how many of you know that's crazy? All the women said, amen. amen. See, that was a great place right there. You like to say, boy, I have a great pastor. Look at that. Oh, he said such sweet things about the thing. Listen to what he said now. This is what God promised to the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And on those that serve me. Say it out loud, those that serve me. That's a choice. Listen to the option. Listen to the offer to those who serve God. To those that serve me, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days. They'll prophesy or speak by divine inspiration. It's amazing what God did in that moment. Supernatural. And there are three basic responses that you can have that they had in that very day. Everything that was happening there is available to you right now. And it's no different. God doesn't change. God doesn't change that much. In fact, the Bible says there's not even a shadow of turning in God. He's immutable and unchangeable. The first is simply this. Here's the first response, and it's a natural one. They questioned the Holy Spirit. They questioned this. What is this? That's a fair question. If you're there and you see this happening, it was a fair question for them to say, what is this? Remember this. Christianity doesn't mean you check your mind at the door. Cults force people to believe things. God's secure. If you don't, if you don't truly understand something, he wants you to gain understanding he really does it's 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 when people try to force you into something to try to make you do something instead of you god loving you training you teaching you let me give you an experience that happened here we weren't even on this property we were way on the other side of cranberry on freedom road in our first facility we were in a, we had a, a prayer room right off the side of, of the platform where the worship team would meet to pray before the service 
And many of you know Vicki East. She's been on staff here for just over 20 some years. And Vicki was leading, helping lead worship. And they were praying. Now, here's how they were praying. They were praying in the Holy Spirit or in those languages given by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when you pray in the Spirit, listen, your spirit is praying, but your mind is not fruitful. It doesn't understand. I love this in 1 Corinthians 14. He said, when you pray in an unknown language, you pray divine secrets. (sighs) Who would not want that? Well, they're praying in the Spirit. They're just worshiping God. Worshiping, praying in their own understanding, praying in the spirit. And when they were done, there was a a guy on our team, and and I've seen his family come back. I think they were out of the area for a while. His name is Raj uh, Daniels. And Raj was born in in India. And he was amazed. He went to Vicky and he said, Vicky, you were speaking my language. And then he said something, and Vicky sent me a text today just to remind I didn't know this part he said but what you don't understand in America you have words that mean everything you can have one word to mean five things he goes that's not so in my dialect you use the words that only relate to the wonders of God you used the exact words that that, that speak of God in my language and and Vicky's from West Virginia they're, they're just working on English there Come on, that was good. I, you might be from West Virginia, but that was good. Come on. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah, almost heaven. It's because you're next door to Pennsylvania. <laughs> no, God loves people in West Virginia. It's okay. And uh, we exiled my oldest brother there, and uh, he found his way back. We tried to keep him out, but he found his way back. <laughs> but uh, what in the, that, that's amazing. That's perplexing. A God that made the universe that doesn't perplex you, you ain't walking with him much. And Raj was like, that was just incredible. As he heard the wonders of God from a woman born in West Virginia. And Vicki speaks very good English. She's wonderful. And so if you get a letter from me, it's because Vicki fixed it. So, okay. <laughs> very, very serious. Now, listen now. This is so, 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 so very important that you get this. Listen, God wants your questions answered. James chapter 1, verse 5. James was the half-brother of Jesus. Same mama, different daddies. Amen? Jesus had some brothers and sisters that would marry and Joseph, you know, afterwards. And James was the pastor at the church of Jerusalem. Had a very significant role in the early church. Listen to what he wrote to the church. And he said, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God. The God who gives generously to all without fault finding, and it will be given to him. See, religion will make you want, not want to approach God. James said, listen, if you lack wisdom, you lack understanding, just go ask God. When you do, he won't rebuke you for it. He won't find fault with you. It'll be given to you. See, it's important that you want. Now, there's a difference between asking God a question and being obstinate and willful. I've had people say this to me. I will not serve God until he answers my every last question. See, you're, that, he's God, you're not. That's not questioning. That's stupid. I, that it wasn't polite. Let me say it really politely. I'm sorry. That's stupid. <laughs> Why is this? He's God. And there are thousands of questions that you can have. And God's not obligated to answer my questions just because I'm curious or I demand of him. But if you genuinely have a question about something that, requ- that requires understanding for you to walk with God, he'll, he said, I'll give it to you. And I won't find fault with you when you ask me. The second response is one that is most common today in our culture is people mock God. They mock him. And that's what's happening today in our culture. That's what they were doing there. God began to move, and here's what, and they said it loud enough that it's the first thing Peter addressed when he responded. People are being, and they said, what is this? This is amazing. And this, and this guy's going, they're hammered. They're drunk. You guys are out of your mind. And they began to mock them. That's a very common response to God in our culture today. We live in a culture today where people have become educated beyond their own intellect. Well, I don't believe in God. I understand. You do have a God, just the one you see in the mirror. And that ain't a good God to have. You're your own God. I, I, I will be the arbiter of what's true. And how long have you been on the earth? I'm 70 years old. Well, there you go. 
you're old. But God is called the ancient of days for a reason. He's the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, the maker of everything that is. He's the creator of the universe. And he's being mocked today over and over. I mean openly. On every, every imaginable way, he's being mocked by people. And that's what the, you can choose to mock God. And by the way, many of us that are serving God today were mockers at one point. God's not against you. He wants to rescue you. But you get to choose. You get to choose pride or humility, stupidity or wisdom. Well, I'm educated. And who, who educated you? Another human being that's going to die? You want to trust your eternity to some woman or man that taught you wherever you were taught? Nothing wrong with it. But if they become your arbiter of truth, are you kidding me? A human being? But it's so easy to respond to God in our culture with our pseudo-intellectualism. We're all so smart. The Bible says that, that the, the, the wisest of men is foolishness to God. And yet he loves you and desires to walk with you. Listen to what he said in Galatians 6 verse 7 about mocking him. Do not be deceived or deluded. God will not allow himself to be mocked. For whatever a man sows or plants into his life, that and that only will he reap. God is not condemning you. He's saying, if that's all you plant, then that's what you're going to get. The next verse actually says, because if you sow to your spirit by the Holy Spirit, you'll reap life. But if you sow to your corruptible body, flesh, and natural understanding, he said, of that planting, you will reap corruption in your life. And as brilliant as our culture is today, because we'll tell you how brilliant we are. You can Google how brilliant we are. We're killing ourselves. It's, it's, it's so degrading that people are, are, are literally dying because of their stupidity and lack of wisdom and, 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 and mocking God, the only source of life. I don't say that to be critical. I was a time in my life I didn't want anything to do with God, and I was verbal about it. But I'm so glad for his kindness and mercy. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that he rescues anybody that will eventually come? He doesn't turn anybody away. Aren't you grateful? You get to choose whether you humble yourself and turn to him and let him love you and bow your knee to his God and lordship or you can mock him. The third and the one that is available to every one of us is to simply receive him. What is available to you today, whether you're watching online, whether you're at the campuses, wherever you are. And by the way, whenever you may be watching this, it doesn't have to be live because God's ever present. Exactly what happened and what I just read is available to you today. And there's not 10 cents of difference. You get to either receive him, question, which is appropriate, or mock him. But the choice is yours. That day, 3,000 people, the Bible said, chose to receive him. 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ. And then were baptized in water and were filled with the Holy Spirit. That same marvelous experience, listen please, that Jesus commanded you to receive is available to you right now. Now, it's so critical that, that you understand this. Let me share with you another experience that we had when we were living in Africa. We were uh, doing what you would call crusades, open air crusades in Zambia. Northern Zambia at the time, uh, the road structure in Zambia was very, very depleted, and it was very difficult to get to where we were. It was northern Zambia, a place called Impika, and it was near the border of, uh, of Congo. And it was very, very remote. But we, went, you know, we brought the, the equipment up there, and there was an open-air meeting. It was a very small village, if you will, but people came from everywhere because it was the only thing there. And they didn't know what was happening, but nonetheless... So we went through, I think, three or four nights of these meetings, and the, there were a handful of local pastors that I would meet with during the day. I wasn't doing the speaking in the evening. We were working for a ministry there. And so in the, we, every night he would give an invitation to receive Jesus, and, and literally thousands of people would give their life to Christ every night. It was remarkable. The last night, he gave people the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Spirit 
with the evidence of speaking in those other languages as the Spirit empowers you. And it was so wonderful when he prayed for people. They, you just, it, it, it seemed like, it seemed like just a, 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 a gentle hand just went over a, 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 these thousands of people and you could hear the sound of their voices being raised and it was remarkable. Service is over. We're doing our stuff to tear everything down. And, the, and if you know anything about Africa, and by the way, we serve so many ministries in Kingdom Builders in Africa. Having lived there, if you've never been to that continent, it is the most amazing amazing place to be and the most amazing people if you ever spend any time in Africa it will be the hardest thing in the world to get it out of your heart incredible people but if you know anything about about the African people man they will worship God and time is not they don't care so the worship thing they just keep going and it's going and it's and everybody's worshiping and and I and there's a lady dressed in just traditional Zambian clothing and you know that you know she's she grew up, she lived there, and will die there. And, and, and I'm walking by her, and I hear her doing this. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I love you, Lord. Oh, you're so great. You're my, and she's worshiping God in English. I'm like, dog. And I'm looking at man, that's great. I just interrupted her. I said, I said, where are you from? And she just stared at me. And I said, I, didn't, I felt maybe she's upset at me. I said, well, where are you? And she said nothing. She couldn't. I said, that, I'm thinking, is that her prayer language? English? So I went and got the interpreter and I said, would you ask her to worship again in, in, in other tongues or in other languages as she had been spirit filled and, and tell her I'll pray with her, but I, just let's do that together. And, and he did and she began, she lifted her hands and I began to worship in, in, in that wonderful prayer language and I heard her do it again. And she was worshiping God in English. He said, well, that's crazy. I think it's crazy to look at God and limit him. I think it's nuts to look at the God that made a peacock and go, he can, I mean, that was just for fun. <laughs> Bible said for, our, for his pleasure we were created. You can't make a peacock and not go, dog, that's cool. That's cool. He paints the sky. Even when death occurs in the fall, the leaves as they die, take your breath away. That's the God you serve. And if you walk with him and the person of the Holy Spirit in a world that's gone nuts, he will take your breath away. He's so, so very good. He's so good. So what would the Apostle Paul say if he were here today speaking to you and me? I want to show you. This is in Acts chapter 19 because now I want to give you the opportunity to actually not hear a message but to receive, to make a choice, to continue questioning, and in some cases, that's very legitimate to mock or to receive him. And that is not up to God. It's up to you. The Apostle Paul was about to go to a city called Ephesus, a port city. And no one had ever preached the gospel there before. And Paul is, is, is now arriving. And let me show you the first thing he does when he, when he meets people that he thinks are followers of Jesus. Listen, Acts, 1 verse, Acts 19 verse 1. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? First question. If the apostle Paul were to meet you today and thought you were a Christian, he wouldn't want to know where you were from. He wouldn't want to know what church. He would say, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, you're believers. He said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And they said, we don't even know if there is a Holy Spirit. And then Paul said, then what were you baptized? They said, John's baptism. And so how many of you know John the Baptist was the forerunner to Jesus? And listen to what Paul says to them. So if again, verse 3, Paul asked, what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this... They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They gave their life to Christ and actually were, they found water and were baptized in water. And then after that occurred, look at verse 6. And when Paul played, placed or laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other languages and prophesied. And there were all, and, and, and there were about 12 men in all. Here's what I want you to see. The Apostle Paul asked a question. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? We don't even know what that means. 
He said, then you don't know. And he told them about Jesus. He led them to Christ. He baptized them in water. Same day, same event. And then he said, we're not done. And he laid his hands on them and prayed for them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues. That's exactly what Paul would do if he was here today. But you would get to choose. And I would get to choose. And there were 12 men. And Jesus said that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll have power to be a witness. 12 men in three and a half years, there were 25,000 people in the church at Ephesus. That's power. And they didn't come from other churches, weren't any. Why am I saying this to you? Because it's so important. It's the first question that the apostle Paul asked. But before you can be filled with the Spirit, if you will, and have this amazing Bible experience, like Paul, he didn't take them first there. He said, hey, I want to make sure you know Jesus, and I want to do that for you at all of our campuses. Because in a moment here at all of our campuses and for you online, you're going to have the opportunity to actually receive the person of the Holy Spirit. But before, I want to do exactly what Paul did. I want to make certain that all of you have given your life to Christ. At all of our campuses, would you just, heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to pray for you. Let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, do you know where you'd spend your eternity? Jesus said there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Jesus came and paid the debt for the sin of man. Sin demanded a punishment. And God so loved the world and God so loved you and me that we could not pay our own debt. So he robed himself in a human body, born of a virgin. Jesus, all God, all man sinless and he hung on that cross as the bible calls him the sacrifice or the lamb of god and the bible says that all of the wrath of god that was due you and me fell on him and god poured his wrath out on himself as he took your place there are only two ways that you will die in this life in your sin or freed from your sin. If you die in your sin, then you will bear the punishment eternally. If you die freed from your sin, you will have had the wisdom to bow your knee to Jesus, the Son of God, and he turns, listen, no one away, no one. Well, I I think I'm going to heaven. You don't get there by thinking. But I'm a good person. I commend you, but you don't get there by being good. You can't be good enough to pay for your debt. But I've been to church. I go, I'm a member of, I was baptized a baby. That's wonderfully sacred, but it has nothing to do with where you spend eternity. The only thing that hangs between you, where you spend eternity, is what you do with Jesus, the one who died and took your payment of your sin and bore your punishment in mind. He died, buried, rose from the dead, conquered death, and offers you eternal life. All you have to do is to receive him and then walk with him. He said, I will make you brand new as if sin never existed before. And when you die... You will be heaven bound, not because of your promises, but because of his. So with every head bowed and every eye closed at all of our campuses, I want to make certain that you've had the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. In a moment, I'm going to ask you, if you desire to be included in a prayer, to simply raise your hand. I'm not going to single you out, neither are your campus pastors. This isn't about you doing something heroic. It's about you bowing your knee to the one who died for you. In a moment, I'll ask you to raise your hand if you want to be included in that prayer. And then at all of our campuses, we will pray the prayer out loud and together with you right where you're seated. And Jesus will come into your life and make you brand new and be the Lord and the Savior of your life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you were to say to me at all of our campuses and your campus pastors are there on the platform now, I don't know what would happen if I died today. And I I, I don't know that I've ever given my life to Christ or I'm not sure or I know I haven't, but I want to receive the living Christ into my life and receive the payment that he made for me and make him my Savior and Lord. And he promised he turns no one away, no one. And he'll make you brand new, not because of your goodness or promises, but because of his goodness and how much he loves you. So with every head bowed and every eye closed at all of our campuses, with only the campus pastors and me viewing what you do right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Say, Pastor, please include me in that prayer. Would you just simply raise your hand right where you're seated and we'll pray for you. Do it right now and we'll pray for you. Right where you're seated, do it right now. Your eternity hangs in the balance. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Thank you, sir. God bless you. One last moment. You can see I'm not going to single you out. This isn't about your heroics. It's about his. You get to choose whether you receive him or reject him. 
So one last moment here at all of our campuses, as heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I've not yet raised my hand, but I really want to be included in that prayer, Pastor John. Please pray for me. Lift your hand one, and if you haven't yet, and I'll pray for you as well. Do it right now. Thank you. Thank you. you put your hands back down. Thank you. If you raised your hand or you should have, pray this out loud with us. We'll pray it with you at all of our campuses. If you're online, pray it where you are. Put it down into the comments. I'm praying with Pastor John today, and we'll get some stuff to help you. But pray it where you hear it, and we'll pray it together with you. Pray it out loud. Say, Heavenly Father. Now pray it where you hear it. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. He died on a cross to bear my sins. I open the door of my heart and life. And Jesus, I invite you in. I receive you now to be my Savior and Lord. Thank you for coming. I am now a child of God. My sin debt is canceled. And when I die, I am heaven bound because Jesus is the Lord of my life. Amen, amen, amen. Give them a hand, would you? Praise God. We're going to spend our remaining time at all of our campuses. In a moment, I'm going to turn it to your campus pastors. And I want to give every person the opportunity to make a decision about the Holy Spirit in your life. Whether you've been a Christian for years and you've never received the baptism with the Holy Spirit or maybe you just gave your life to Jesus today, as you saw in the Bible, you, you don't have to wait. Listen, li- listen, listen, listen. Please get this. Whether you've given your life to Jesus and been a Christian for 13 seconds or 13 years or 60 years, you're on equal footing with God. God has no favorite children. Nobody earned anything. We're all on the same footing. And what is available to you today, if you've been a Christian for 13 seconds, is not less than someone who has served God for 60 years because it isn't about your goodness it's about his and I want to show you the reason why people fail to receive and then we're going to turn it over to our campuses and we're going to worship God together and as we do you're going to, at all our campuses have the opportunity to come have someone pray for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit you get to choose today today In Luke chapter 11, Jesus told told us the struggle that people have to receive from God. And he answered the question that is asked 10,000 times over in all of our lives. How could God do something good for me when I'm like I am? In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, Jesus is speaking. He says, so I tell you, ask and you will receive. Search and seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone, say it out loud, at all the campuses, everyone. Say it again, everyone. Everyone, this is everyone, everyone, everyone who asks will receive. The one who searches will find. The, for the person who knocks, God's saying the door will be open for you. And now Jesus qualifies it. Because we all know that's very hard. To, God, how could you do that for me? Now then he, he tells you why. He said, if your child asked you, his father, for a fish, would you give him a snake instead? Anybody here, if your kid asks for a piece of fish, you give them a live poisonous snake. Any, any parents we need to call CYS on, raise your hand. Jesus is saying nobody would do that, that remotely love their child. Or if your child would ask you for an egg, would you give him a live scorpion? Any, any takers? Uh, you said, that's absurd. Okay, now listen to what Jesus said. Even though you're evil compared to God, of course, you know how to give good gifts to your children. So how much more? Say it out loud. How much more? Look at this. So how much more will your Father in heaven give, and once say give, not earn, give the Holy Spirit to those that do what? Ask Him. What's my responsibility? Ask. And to believe He's at least as good as you are as a parent. How many of you, you may not have a a whole lot you believe about God, but do you, how many of you believe he's at least as good as you are? Anybody at least can put God in that category. And can I tell you what, why Jesus used this example? Because when you take a small child and a teenager in our culture and they are hungry, they don't come to you begging. They come to you demanding. You ever have one of your kids? If a child's not abused, this has happened. I don't want to eat that. And, you know, Michelle would be, well, honey, what do you want? And I'd be like, what do I care what you want? Shut up, eat. You'll live. 
It's an Italian thing. But here's the deal. I've never had one of our kids go up to Michelle or to me. I know I don't deserve it. I failed you so many times. I've broken things that I shouldn't have broken, and I even lied about it. I've wrecked your car. I painted your house when you guys weren't here when I was little. I painted the whole downstairs. I thought it looked great, but I didn't. Now looking back, it was not a good decision. If you would, could you feed me t- today? If it be your will, I promise I'll be good. You'd be like, you're on drugs, aren't you? Well, how does a child act? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. What's Jesus saying? Have, have as much faith in God as a parent, as a child would have in a parent when they're not abused. He said, ask of me, I'll give. Here's all you have to do. Ask. I will fill you. I know how to fill you. How, how am I going to do this? You're not. Any more than my kids ever cooked anything for us. They sat down and ate. You just got to eat. The Bible says, open your mouth wide and God will fill it. Taste and see that God is good. So at all of our campuses, prayer partners, make your way up right now, quickly. Just all our prayer partners, make your way up. Because we're about to worship God at all the campuses. I'm going to turn it over to your campus pastor. And as we worship God, here's what, let's all stand together at all of our campuses. And I want you to just hear this from my heart. Just go ahead as you stand, as an act of surrender to God. Close your eyes. Lift your hands as an act of worship. And let me just exhort you one last time. If you are a Christian, if you've given your life to Jesus and you have never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you've never had this marvelous Bible experience and you want to receive what God, all that God has for you, you want your response to be, yes, I want Him. Not I'm going to, if you will, question or mock. I'm not going to be neutral. I'm going to act and receive. Here's all you have to do as we worship God. At all the campuses, just come meet with a prayer partner. Now, prayer partners, listen to me. I don't want you having a long conversation. I simply want you to lay your hands on them and pray for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit and just keep praying with them. That's, and, and when you pray, it's this simple. All of our campus, listen, please hear this. This isn't you earning anything. And I'm going to lead everybody in this prayer. And then as our worship team leads you in worship at all of our campuses, If you desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit and leave here with this marvelous relationship added to your life, then as we worship, I want you to come and meet with a prayer partner and we're going to worship God together. But we're all going to pray this out loud and then we're going to worship. And at the end of this prayer, I'm turning it over to your pastors. Father, I pray for everyone at all of our campuses as we lift our hands as an act of surrender. For those that have been given their life to Jesus, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is available for for them to receive today. And as we worship you, it's my prayer, Father, that they will act on what they desire and come and have someone pray for them and to receive the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I thank you that for everyone that asks will receive because you are faithful in their life. You are faithful. And so in Jesus' name, I thank you for that, Lord. As people now, as we worship you, make their way out of their seats and come and say, I am hungry for more of him. And when I'm prayed for, I will be filled with the Spirit and worship him in that other language with my voice as the Holy Spirit enables me. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, man, let's worship God together. Make your way out of your seats as we now worship. Come and be filled with the Spirit. Come on. As we see
either I forget which Saturday or Sunday I think it was Saturday service God is so good we were if you're online wherever you are God wants to help you as we were worshiping the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and I and I came at this point in the service and said you just said these words out of your heart and I listed a bunch of things somebody had said about being hopeless and and I get a I get a call from from one of one of my family who were watching online so he was laying on the floor watching the service and, and actually stretching. And he, and he said, it was, as I was laying there, I was just out of my, I just started to say, God, and all the things, I, I said everything. And then five seconds later, you said, you just said, and you repeated everything I just said. And he said, I just, I just lay there and cried. God, how could you do this for me? You see, he's desperate to help. I'm telling you that the Holy Spirit wants to move in supernatural ways to make you free. This isn't a game. This isn't some religious nonsense. This is walking with the God of all creation. Oh, how he loves you. And I can tell you this is that if you know anything about Italian brothers, they don't lie to you. I want you to get that. Because if one of my brothers, man, I'm telling you, they're lethal. If you know anything about Italian brothers, I'm just telling you. God's wanting to do great things in your life. Don't resist. As we sing one more time through, if you have any needs in your life, our prayer partners beyond being filled with the Holy Spirit are going to be here. If you want to stick around and worship a little bit with them, they're going to worship just a little bit with you. And as we just sing this one more time through, at the end of this, you can be dismissed, but they're going to continue worshiping if you want to stay in worship. I'm telling you, God wants to move right now in your life. The same God that sovereignly moves constantly. He can heal your body while you worship. There's nothing impossible for God. You're meeting with the God of creation. Expect Him 
to act in your life today. Say it out loud, expect. Come on, man. Expect him to change the impossible. Expect him. He's faithful to you. Oh, he's so good. Father, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives. Now we lift our voice again as we worship you. And for those who will come and be prayed for other areas of their life, thank you for the manifestation of your power in our life. We worship you with everything in our souls. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let's worship him one more time. Yeah.